Eugene Debs was a union organizer, social activist, and politician in the early part of the 20th century. We traveled to his former home turned museum in Terre Haute, Indiana, and sat down with Dr. Charles King, professor of sociology emeritus at Indiana State University, to discuss the life of Eugene Debs. Eugene Debs was a person who had, in a way, you could almost say it, uh, two careers, although they overlapped considerably. He started out as a labor leader. Uh, this was in the early days of uh, organized labor in the United States, and uh, long before they had any kind of legal protections. Labor unions didn't have the right to strike. They did so at risk of, uh, well, all kinds of abusive treatment, including, of course, workers being dismissed. Debs founded the American Railway Union in 1893, uniting workers from across the railroad industry. He realized that they had to have some of this kind of unity if they were going to have any effective uh, bargaining power or ability, especially if they were decided to strike. But in a way, all these specialties on the railroads uh, joined together in his American Railway Union and had one very successful strike against the Great Northern, which shut down all of the freight traffic between uh, Chicago and the East Coast and the West Coast. After joining forces with striking workers from the Pullman Palace Car Company, Debs found himself targeted by the federal government. He spent time in jail. That's when he realized that there had to be some political changes in our judicial system uh, and political system if, we were, if workers were going to really have any chance for uh, progress. That's when he uh, uh, focused more from that point in his career on uh, 1895 on uh, into political activism. Upon his release, Debs began to write for the socialist paper Appeal to Reason. He also fought for and won a seat in Congress representing Indiana's 5th District and continued making fiery speeches. He, he did run for president five times, uh, knowing really that his program was going to be more educational than anything. He didn't really expect to become president, but he did expect to, to grow. By 1912, a lot of things that Debs and the Socialists had been advocating since 1900 were at least talking points in the platforms of the major parties. Though his voice was suppressed, he was able to greatly influence the mainstream politics of the time. Many of the things that he uh, had advocated did get achieved because of his activism, uh, restrictions on child labor. He also uh, uh, made them aware of the role government could play in regulation. And of course, the women, right of women to vote, he was an early advocate of that. So a very radical idea in his time. But modern historians generally concede that uh, Debs made it easier for the Democratic Party to come out with its uh, New Deal legislation, which included, of course, a uh, right of workers to strike, to organize and to, to strike, to collect union dues and things like that, and setting up a National Labor Relations Board. Neither the government nor media were receptive to Deb's ideas initially, but over time they co-opted many of his early policies. Debs served a second term in prison, actually a, a longer term, uh, for his uh, speaking out against uh, World War I. He was a pacifist, he was anti-war. He said, and there is a factual basis for that, that uh, rich people make wars. Of course, the poor people, the working class people that have to do the dying, President Wilson did not approve of Debs' messages and ordered J. Edgar Hoover, security chief at the time, to systematically observe Debs in an effort to discourage him from making further dissenting remarks. And Debs refused to be muzzled by that. He, he wanted to get imprisoned, as a matter of fact. He felt that that was uh, his right. Uh, that's democracy. It's interesting that nowadays uh, lawyers learn about him in law school and uh, his role in providing the basis for reaffirming the First Amendment right to freedom of speech, including freedom to speak out against war. Nonconformist ideas always have the potential to make strong impacts on society despite the all too common threat of suppression. 
However, dissenting opinions are required for the eventual improvement of a democracy. Attempts at restricting the free speech of any citizen can only slow the effects of positive change, but can never truly prevent them. The life and works of Eugene Debs highlights this democratic principle in action. Thank <laughs> you.